a lot of new people uh, on <clears throat> Sunday introducing you to the our cult that we're building. So hopefully Nick from Sunday. What's up, man? Earlier, yeah. Uh, so, but going back to us, competition for the spots. I almost don't see any way that uh, Lori Pionemi makes the team. Uh, just because those those spots are already filled. That's six, yeah. by the way. There was two in the last minute. I, uh, I, I think I think the Rangers it really it's really just comes down to the defense. I think the forward spots are pretty much are pretty much locked in. I don't know how much competition is really there. I mean Barron, but I think they're the interesting decisions for them are gonna be on defense, I think for sure. Yeah, I think Kevin Rooney might win the uh the fourth center spot. I think like Dan said, I, I think he's right about that. I think they're going to go with an experience because this, this looks like it's, they want to be a playoff team. And I, I, I really think that they're going to take that mentality and they're going to have the veterans there over the, the youth. So I, I think that would apply to Kevin Rooney over Morgan Barrett as well. Yeah. And I, and I do think Nils Lundqvist has the edge for that on defense too. I mean, I, I think so too. I, 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 I just wondered if, if it kept up, would they, would they have more of a decision to make? Like if, if he like how Keandre Miller blew them out of the water last year yeah. in camp and in the preseason. So. And you also remember defense, defensemen usually take longer to develop too. I mean, it helps that he's been playing pro. Um, you know, he's not a 19 year old green kid coming out of juniors, but you know, I think I think they're going to be patient with all their young defenders, regardless of which one makes the team. Yeah. And a little tidbit, too, that I, I actually agree with here. Uh, DP was right. Justin Richards looked good last night. He did. He made a lot of things happen on that line with Oppmann and uh, Brodzinski. So I, I I gotta I gotta say I was definitely impressed by him. Which says something because I've kind of joked saying if Brodzinski is the answer, what the hell is the question? But <laughs> there was a lot of there was a lot of good that came out of that line. You know what? You're kind of seeing some good seeds out of uh, Brendan Ottman right now too. Yeah, and Stephen with another good point here. I mean, again, that kind of just ties into what Dan said is uh, you know that they that they were going to probably go with more of a veteran outlook in uh, this lineup. I, I would, I, like I said, you would have to really, really beat the world as a, uh, as a young kid trying to get into the lineup to really get that spot. So I, I really think we're going to end up seeing. And there has to be there. a hole for you too. You saw that when Philip Heedle came up back in 2017 and you yeah. saw that, when uh, Anthony Duclair was there in 2015, the, but it's difficult when you, when the team wants you to get that spot. That's a different story. That's why Nils Lundqvist might be on the opening night roster, though he has competition. We're going to be talking about that in one second. And um, Anthony, uh, your thoughts on some of the Islander guys? Uh, do you think any of those guys could even make the lineup? Well, Trotz has, has some high praises from uh, Robin Salo so far. Um, he's liked the way he skate. He skated, um, how he's got himself out of trouble with the, by skating the puck up, um, you know, the offensive instincts he has with his outlet passes. So um, the only thing for me is I think there's no doubt he's going to be a defender for the Islanders in the future. Just they have Eric Gustafson on the PTO. You know, he had two assists against the Rangers. Trotz has, has praised him as well. Um, you know he loves his his veterans a little more than the younger guys, so that's why when it comes down to maybe that last spot on defense, I think Eric Gustafson probably has the edge over Robin Salo. Um, but Robin Salo isn't far behind. Um, the competition really comes down to the forwards. I mean, there's no doubt who the starting twelve are going to be, but that thirteenth and fourteenth spot, the two extra forwards are going to carry. You know, you have a lot of guys competing for those spots. Richard Ponick. Um, you know, Michael Del Cole, Ross Johnson, Leo Komarov, Anatoly Golishev, um, you know, and a lot of those got Kiefer Bellows and a lot of all those guys are waiver eligible. So whoever they decide to waive is going to have pass through waivers. And judging by the preseason so far, Richard Ponick's played in both games. Uh, Trotz is saying his praises too. he said he's similar in the, to Leo Komarov, just a more skilled version of Leo. 
Um, you know, he could play on that fourth line with Matt Martin not skating right now. He could also play up in your lineup. So I think for sure he's going to be the 13th forward. Um, that last spot, again, it's going to come down between Johnston, Del Col, um, you know, Leo or goalie Chev, which um, Trotz has said has looked good. He's used them on, on a line with Barzell and Lee uh, during the training camp days so far, just because he knows he's a more skilled guy and wanted to see if he could keep up. So, um, yeah, it's just those last two spots with, I think, Ponick already having the 13th spot locked down. But the Islanders are deep, 1 through 12. There's no question about who the starting 12 are going to be. It's just going to be those last two forward spots. But um, they have good depth. As Dan Rosen said, they, they really have good depth. I mean, you're talking, you know, Richard Ponick could probably play on a lot of other teams. And on the Islanders right now, he's like the 13th forward. So um, I have no issues with the Islanders forward group right now. And I'm curious to see who wins that last spot. No, the, I mean, the only thing I would worry about with the Islanders would just be, like I said, Nick Letty, the hole there, What, who steps up and replaces those top four minutes? That's that's really the only question. And you got a question, though, if it's Dan Ochara, can he really do it at 42 years old? Because, I mean, He's after bad. all, you know, once yeah. you turn 42, you're decrepit and you're, you're dying and you should just be put out the pasture. Unless you're Yarmar Yager. Yeah. And, and you know, 43 <laughs> Chara played about 18 minutes with Washington last year. So I think Trust isn't going to be afraid to use him. Um, you know, he's referenced what Chara has done for McAvoy in Boston. He's pairing him with Dobson and training with training camp. And I'm thrilled about that. Having Noah Dobson, you know, shadow, one of the best defensemen, the best defenseman in the last, you know, tenure of what, 15 years or so. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's good. You know, he's going to learn, he's going to be like a sponge. And I think it's only a good thing to have Chara paired with him, but it seems like that's going to be the pair to start the year at Chara Dobson. So, uh, by the way, we're going to go back to the Ranger one, one second, but first, uh, I just had both, to say uh, that. Highlight, highlight the first part of that where Dave had his comment right there. Yeah. Uh, so, Jack, Johnson, yeah. Jack Johnson scored a goal that was deflected off of Las Vegas is Brett Howden. The first time Howden and Johnson combined <laughs> for, uh, seemingly ever, or that will be. But well, uh, as long as it doesn't comment, damage uh, Howden's intentions per 60, they'll be okay. Yeah. Going to Brody's comment, though, Strom, Kaka, Panarin, they looked real solid last night. I mean, Artemi Panarin is the ultimate deodorant for the New York Rangers. They certainly don't stink when he's around. Yeah. So, yeah. And right, that's that. That's a that's a nice little analogy right there. I'd say. Yeah. Well, that's you know I have to replace uh, some intelligent conversation since I don't say um too much anymore. I'm trying <laughs> yeah. not to. All right. Uh, but we want to know what you guys think about what were your thoughts on the preseason games? Uh, I don't even know what happened. There's seven. There. I don't even know what happened with the Islanders last night. Anthony. They Did won. They they won 3-2 in overtime. Beauvillier uh, had had two goals. Noah Dobson had a goal and two assists. Okay, there we go. 3-2. Yeah, that one I didn't get to, to record. I could only record tour. one game. We're going to be taking a tour of UBS Arena next week where you'll see a video of us talking about that. We can't wait for that. That's going to be, uh, that's going to be great to see at least. Finally, the Islanders can get an update arena and not – and I'm not even talking about with the uh, with the Brooklyn one that they were at. Just the Barclays was not. Yeah. Kako on the PK. That is right. It wasn't a great one. But we're going to move on and do some bar talk, guys. You missed. Uh, I missed what? You missed the whole uh, little. Topic oh, wait. There. Actually, that's you know what, Anthony? You're <laughs> right about that. It's a good thing we're not moving on just yet. But we are moving on to a different topic. But. So uh, we keep talking about the restricted free agents that are out there, and it's a it, this is this is big news. There are tectonic plates that are shifting. Last week, uh, Kiprasov resigning that that was a bit of a shocker to me. Elias Pettersson and Hughes. Kip, Kip, Kiprasov is back. The goalie, the goalie of the Calgary Flames is back. Kiprasov. <laughs> Kaprizov. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> You really yeah, just when, call when him Kiprasov? He did call him Oh, Kipersov. Mark. Oh, I said Kiprasov, yeah. Oh, <laughs> my God. Oh, well, shut up. <laughs> five, <laughs> five years, nine million. Yeah, three years at nine. Uh, that, that's a good deal, at least to get him in. I don't like giving it to a second-year player, but 
what are you going to do if you're Minnesota when he's got you over a barrel? Yeah. But Anthony, give me your thoughts on the remaining three. Which one does, do you think might be signing first? Uh, I mean, I don't know. It, it, it doesn't seem like any three of them are particularly close. Um, you know, I sent a tweet in our group before. It says that uh, Pedersen and Hughes right now, talks are ongoing, but nothing seems close at the moment. Um, Kachuk, last I heard that, you know, now he's now he's considering a, a bridge deal because it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to hammer out a long-term deal. Um, I mean, listen, I don't, I don't think any of these – go as long as Nylander did a couple of years ago where he literally signed on December 1st at 4:59. Um, you know, I think they'll all be signed um, eventually. However, I'm not, I'm not so confident anymore that none of them, you know, won't miss any games. At first I thought it would be a shoe in. Um, I just at this rate, I don't know. I mean, Trent, you know, the season's what, maybe 10, uh, 10, 12 days away. Um, so I'm not so sold on that. And I, if I had to pick a guess, um, I would think maybe Hugh signs first out of the three of them. But, I mean, it really could be any of them. But, hey, listen, these three teams, especially Vancouver, Ottawa probably doesn't realistically have any playoff hopes. But Vancouver's a team that could possibly make the playoffs. And you want your two best players signed and in camp with your team. The longer they miss, the worse it is for them. So, Agreed. Uh, it's not a, not a good situation for either of those three clubs. Yeah, it, and, and and Stephen just brought up a good point. You know, the, the, when you miss camp, anytime you miss camp for whatever reason, you know, usually you, you start out slow. Yeah. And look at Mika Zibanejad last year. He missed a lot of the camp, you know, with COVID. He had a real slow start. That first half of the season was not kind to him at all. And now you have two of your – probably your two best players in Hughes and Pedersen, and that hurts Vancouver more than it hurts Ottawa, if anything. Ottawa has no expectations on them. I know that Dorian. Well, the rebuild is over. I, I don't know if you heard about that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, <laughs> shut up here, Dorian. Just please shut up for for the for the sake of your fans, your franchise, and yourself. Stop saying. Stop speaking, please, because you, you sound idiotic. But Kachuk, Kachuk wants a lot of money, and he's not worth what he's supposedly looking for. So. If Ottawa caves and gives him the money that he's looking for, that that could possibly hurt them going forward. Because then, what happens when Drake Batherson's uh, when there's one for me? And what happens when that comes around? What like when when his contract comes up? What happens with him? What happens with Tim Stutzla? I mean, he he's going to probably be their best player in their team going forward, if not Thomas Shabbat. So. Yeah. Uh, Batherson signed a six-year deal a couple of weeks ago. Oh, that's right. That's right. Sorry. Yeah, but, I mean, I'm ta talking about, like, Stutzla and some of these other guys like Norris, guys that will – they're going to get some big contracts, especially if it gets to the point that Kachuk's gotten to. So, I, I know it doesn't hurt Ottawa now with the, the, the standings and everything like that, but going forward in the next few years, that, that could be a problem for them. But Vancouver – for a team that should have playoff aspirations, this is a huge blow. See, I I actually think they should really force some of these guys to take bridge deals because they're not putting up Connor McDavid numbers. You got to be kidding me! And you got to give like eight million, <laughs> right? But I mean, eight million right now it, it, for it, like a what a fifty point player? Forty gold last year, and I missed it. Like. And I believe the guy's got great talent. I believe I, I would I would put an offer sheet in for Elias Pettersson right now if I could. But also, if he's going to look over at me and go, "You, I want eleven million dollars." No, absolutely not. I mean, I'm, and I'm not trying to take away any leverage these guys got. This is their leverage. This is their lives. This is their negotiations. But if I'm I'm a team guy, no. That right there. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it says it all. Great area. It says it all. I wouldn't give Kachuk eight to nine million at all. No, I mean, I, the thing is, Ottawa has a ton of cap space, so the, the cap space isn't the issue here with with Kachuk. I, I, I just, yeah, right now. But like I said, you, you got to look at that team in a few years. They're they're going to have a lot of contracts that are come up. They're yeah. going to be like the Rangers. A lot of a lot of guys coming off of ELC and and second year or second deals, and they're going to require some big money. So Ottawa, you know, Dorian's got to be smart 
And I, I understand we, we, we all know about how cheap Melnick can be. But I, I'm with Ottawa on this one. That Kachuk is not worth eight to nine million. Yeah, he hasn't uh, put yet. up anywhere close to no, any numbers anywhere close to deserving that type of money. And, and by the way, it's good to have a friend like Steven who pointed out if he signs during the season that 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 cap hit gets higher. So what might what might happen for Vancouver to help them is I heard that Travis Hamonic just re-signed with them this offseason, but now I'm hearing that he might either retire or actually opt out, which would save them three million. Um, you know, and that and that would help them because I think off the top of my head, I think they have somewhere around like thirteen or fourteen million in cap space right now. Um, you would think that's enough, but Pedersen and Hughes can likely get eight million alone by themselves. So that's sixteen million right there. So if they could save three million from Hamannick, you know, doing one of those two things, that would help them. But um, yeah, I, I don't, these two guys that I think they should have made a stronger priority to get them done earlier in the, yeah. I mean, I get Hughes wasn't eligible. I also, I also don't understand what the, what the holdup is on Hughes. The guy can't be offer sheeted. Exactly. Yeah. He yeah. can't be offer sheeted. He doesn't have, he's not arbitration eligible. So he doesn't yeah. have the leverage that someone like Patterson does. So I, I mean, I, I know so that we're not going to really just trying to get him in. On, on figuring out what Pedersen's going to sign for, then you got to turn to him and go, you're going to sign for this because you want to be on this team and you really have no other choice. Okay, great. And, and seeing, But this and team seeing needs to feel the team. Up. They can actually make the playoffs in that division. And I'm sure seeing that Kaprizov got $9 million doesn't really help Vancouver's case with Pedersen because Pedersen sees that, you know, a guy that played one year in the league and got $9 million already. I mean, that that's... Older player... He had uh, he has the KHL as an option, not really because we we've, we've gone over that at a different time. And the other thing is, there's he was one year RFA, and then um, like <clears throat> he was going to he he kind of was using his leverage the right way. Yeah. And Minnesota really needed to keep him, and he's got that hardware. Like yeah, and he's also decorated in Russia. I mean, this is a guy that was you know widely yeah. a player outside the NHL. When we talk about Adam Fox's contract coming up, he's going to point to, uh, right behind him, eight, and then say, look at that Norris trophy I got right there. You know how many Rangers won a Norris trophy? Yeah, and, and Steven's point, Anthony talked about that before with Nylander signing literally on the final yeah, minute of the that. deadline on his last day. So, uh, I mean, that that's something that we're, we're definitely familiar with. But it, the, the thing is, is I, I, I like Joe's point here is how – you know, teams go from we have a lot of cap space to to making a dumb trade like the trade that Chicago made to to trade uh, <laughs> Panarin to Columbus to get what Brandon Sod back. That, yeah. that was bad. That was really yeah. bad. So you, you got it. Like that's why I was talking about Ottawa. Like you, you got to watch what you're doing. And for me, Vancouver, what they should have done was they should have moved. Tyler Myers before going and adding Connor Garland and Oliver Ekman Larson. And even yeah. with Arizona retaining on Ekman Larson's contract, that's a lot of salary to be taking in for two guys, especially one. And I get it. You, you, you want to bring in a guy that's a puck mover, but is Oliver Ekman Larson ever going to be worth the money that you're going to be paying him regardless of that $1 million in retention yeah. when you have Quinn Hughes, who's a far better puck mover and power play quarterback at this point in their respective careers? No. Well, also, so why do you look that? up redundant in the dictionary, just see redundant. If your power play quarterback is Quinn Hughes, that's who you're going Why with. do you need Ekman Larson at that point? Yeah. This this comment, um, we and we, we bantied about this, but – Look, Minnesota, obviously, I think all 31 teams would have lined up for Kirill Kaprizov. But yeah. I don't, know, I don't know if the Wild would have gotten fair value for Kaprizov in a trade based on what his rumored, you know, ass was on his contract, you know, only wanting three years. I know he eventually settled to five. Um, but, he, yeah, I mean, the Wild would have got back a lot. I just don't think it would – they would have got anything – um, to his level, that would have helped them for this year. Sure, they probably would have got good prospects maybe for the future, but for the current time period, I don't know if they would have won that trade. Well, what do you guys think? Would you have traded Kaprizov? Uh, who are these guys? Would you have 
signed or can you believe that some of them aren't signed right now throw it all down in the comments below we're gonna go on